Hello, family, and welcome to the season four premiere of the Good News Network. Reporting to you from Miami, Florida, my name is Luke Speckman. And I'm Brandon Speckman. And for those of you joining us for the first time, the Good News Network is the official online newscast for the International Christian Churches, where we share with you the miracles of God working through our global family of churches. We're so eager to kick off this fourth season of GNN, since we have so much good news from July and August, overflowing from our church's eight geographic world sectors, along with the world sectors of shepherding, administration, and law, as well as mercy. On July 20th was the start of an unforgettable week as doctors Kip and Elena McKean gathered our world sector leaders in Mexico City, just eight days before the 2023 Latin America Missions Conference. They rejoiced at the reports that all of the sold out movement churches had refocused on campus ministry and in imitation of Jesus' ministry, were raising up several new leaders, both full-time and non-full-time. However, with such great attention given to our campus ministries, some teens, singles, and Mary's disciples in our fellowship began to feel neglected. So after much prayer and counsel, it was agreed that the ministry focus everywhere in every church will be that campus ministry is first among equals, teens, campus, singles, and the Mary's ministries. Following the World Sector Leaders meeting on Sunday, July 23rd was the Ignite Sunday service overseen by Nick and Jesse Cly of San Francisco. Ignite is an annual week-long teen leadership program hosted this year in Mexico City as well. For the 24 teen disciples from around the world, this was an unforgettable week filled with bonding, learning, and rigorous training culminating in a fiery Sunday worship service, where the Ignite teens led our worship in singing, shared passionately about the cross and contribution, and preached the word. Also in Mexico City, before the Latin American Missions Conference, were three historic events. On Sunday night after the Ignite service began the Crown of Thorns Council meeting in which Mickey and Lily Ngungu have become the newest members. This is such a terrific honor and responsibility as the Crown of Thorns Council oversees world missions for the entire movement. On Tuesday evening was the International College of Christian Ministries Chancellor's Gala, which was Dr. Tim Kernan's first as the newly appointed ICCM Chancellor. Next, on Wednesday morning began the much anticipated third campus leadership seminar titled filled with awe. The ICLS drew over 1,000 local and international campus disciples for three days, packed full of spiritual wisdom, and students left filled with awe and vision to radically transform their respective campuses. And last but certainly not least was the Latin America Missions Conference titled Sin Limites, in English, No Limits. An incredible host of over 1,200 disciples gathered in Mexico City's Hilton Hotel for three days filled with inspiration, worship, and priceless fellowship. Now, some of the weekend's highlights were the presentation of the 2023 Order of Mordecai and Order of Esther Awards. The Order of Mordecai and Esther Awards are to honor individuals who have displayed exceptional courage under Fire. And this year's proud recipients were Jean Bernard and Lorvali Colleen of Haiti, Victor Maslianikov and Sandra Smith of Poland, Felix and Priska Ngoren of Burundi, and Lili Ngungu of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Also recognized during this moving ceremony was Nara Evici, a young Bujumbura intern who lived with the Nagorans and whose belongings were destroyed in the recent fire that consumed the Nagorans' home. When Nara returned home that fateful evening for the first time after the fire and saw the destructive aftermath, she shed tears not for her material belongings, but for the loss of her precious Bible as she was given that French Bible when she was sent off from Abidjan Ivory Coast to Bujumbura, Burundi to be a full-time intern. In honor of her incredible heart for God, Nora was presented with a brand new French Bible at the Kingdom Banquet, which was signed by the World Sector Leader Sisters. As well, disciples cheered and gave standing ovations at the appointments to be formally recognized as evangelist and women's ministry leaders of Hugo and Paulina Melendez and Chris and Jessica McCloskey, both of San Francisco, and Juan Carlos and Juliana Arias of Lima, Peru. An equally resounding applause came in response to the appointments of Calder and Cassandra Akin of New York City to be the new geographic sector leaders in the Northeast USA. Closing out the conference was the stirring send-off of the Quito, Ecuador mission team. This team of just eight disciples is particularly unique as they had no opportunity to spy out the land prior to their send-off, and so they were sent out in complete faith with a confidence and assurance in the unseen, just like Abraham and Sarah. What amazing hearts. Congratulations to all. 
And now we'll jump right into our special announcement, coming to you from the Sold Out Press International Publishing House. Hello, family. It is with great excitement that we announced the launch of a new and remarkable Sold Out Press publication, which will be an all-time staple for your Soapy library, and it is called the Jesus Study Series. Many know and love our First Principles booklet, which has been published in 12 languages and used as a tool to help evangelize and save thousands of souls around the world. The Jesus Study series will help disciples to be even more effective in studying, specifically with those from non-Christian backgrounds such as atheists, agnostics, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, and animists. Most estimate there are 8.1 billion souls in this world, three quarters of which do not have any kind of faith in Jesus. However, this series will arm disciples eager to bring the multitudes to an unwavering faith in God and a deep conviction that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Head over to Amazon.com to get your own copy of this outstanding book as every ICC congregation will be teaching the Jesus Study series either this fall or in January 2024. All profits will go directly into the Mercy McKean Scholarship Foundation that awards tuition for gifted students in the developing world. Thank you so much, Dr. Kit McKean, Roger Rajan, the South Asian leaders, and the SOAPY team for creating this series and for your hearts to equip every single disciple with the tools to turn this world upside down for Jesus. We've already purchased our own copies and are looking forward to seeing the impact they will have in the coming years. And now we turn over to recently appointed Chris McCloskey of the San Francisco Church for a special Campus Day in the Life of a Disciple. My name is Chris McCloskey. I was baptized on September 8th, 2016 in San Francisco. Uh, in our church, we have nearly 200 disciples in the campus ministry. Uh, I personally lead our Berkeley region. At UC Berkeley, we have 31 disciples, and we're excited for what God's gonna do this fall. And uh, through lots of prayer and faith, we, uh, we have a goal to see 50 disciples in the campus ministry in Berkeley by the end of this year. During the week, it, it's, it's incredible. Uh, I wake up between 6, 6.30 a.m., uh, meet, meet all the campus disciples on campus at 7. We have a 7 a.m. prayer. I love seeing how the first people on campus are the disciples. From there, a lot of the students will go to class. Uh, I'll hop into some Bible studies. And this is essentially what, what the whole day looks like from going back to back from sharing our faith in groups to having Bible discussions, to being in Bible studies, uh, having D times. In the evening, I'll go home, I'll grab something to eat for dinner, and then I will kind of shift gears and I'll join our singles ministry where I'll get into D times, do Bible studies, or do Bible talk in the evening with our singles ministry. Through God and with their faith, the disciples really show students at UC Berkeley that it is possible to, to get good grades and, and manage a demanding class schedule while being an athlete, but also putting God first and, and really focusing on a true relationship with God. Our two week campaign included sharing with 100 people a day and setting up two Bible studies per, per disciple. Uh, it's incredible because we, uh, we really went after it. The hearts of the disciples have been really faith filled because sharing with a hundred people a day has, has allowed us to see over a hundred Bible studies amongst our 30 disciples. And some days we have 30 to 40 plus Bible studies a day. Uh, and we're, we're, we're busy and we're working on campus and we were able to witness the first miracle, the first baptism in the Berkeley campus ministry as we saw our latest sister, our newer sister, Nayeli, get baptized. You know, I'm, uh, I'm super excited for the fall semester ahead of us because we know that God's gonna do great things through us. He's gonna give us many miracles and many victories. And I just can't wait to see the abundance of fruit that God's gonna bring the hard work and the faith of all the disciples at UC Berkeley. 
Thank you so much, Chris, for sharing a day in your life with us. We're so grateful for the campus ministries worldwide and are excited to see the plentiful harvest God will surely bring this autumn. And now for good news from around the world. Many of you have heard the tragic news from Maui, where a series of wildfires have consumed hundreds of homes, forced thousands of families to evacuate, and have taken the lives of what is now 115 people, with 122 still unaccounted for by the FBI. Sensing the urgency of the situation, the directors of our church's benevolent arm, Mercy Worldwide, Nick and Denise Bordieri, flew to Maui from their home in Mexico City, even while the fires were still burning. Since they were first responders, Mercy was honored to be asked to partner with the West Maui Community Aid Task Force and the Red Cross to meet the immediate needs of the people. From traveling to distribution centers to coordinating the flow of supplies, our Mercy ambassadors coming from throughout Hawaii, but especially from the Maui church just planted a month before, have worked diligently to serve in their community in this hour of need. And thanks to the generosity of many of you in donating to their efforts, an incredible $50,000 has been raised to help them further the mission of compassion and action in Maui. Please keep their heroic efforts in your most fervent prayers as Chris Lastra, the Maui evangelist seen here wearing his green mercy shirt, had this photo go viral around the globe. Indeed, mercy is being used by the spirit to evangelize the nations and to God be all the glory. As well, we are so excited to announce that European world sector leaders and London church leaders Michael and Michelle Williamson have recently been appointed as the ICC's Global Singles and AMS leaders. And this year, they will be hosting in London the first ever Singles and AMS Leadership Conference happening less than two months from now on October 24th and 25th. Following will be the always thrilling European Missions Conference to be held on October 26th through 29th. Most of the information to register can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and the London ICC website. If you're interested in attending one or both of these conferences, please talk with your church leader for more detailed information. And now from our tribe Pack Rim World Sector in the Davao Philippines Church comes the news of the Bernaldez family. When Jonathan became a disciple last year, he was so excited to reach out to his wife and three children. A month later, to the glory of God, all three of his children became baptized disciples. His wife, Ophelia, was dearly loved in the congregation for her kindness and serving heart. And in time, she became persuaded to say the Bible as well. With continuous church-wide prayer, God opened Ophelia's heart to the truth and answered all her questions and hesitations through the scripture. On Saturday, July 15th, a year after Jonathan's own baptism, he baptized his wife Ophelia at six in the morning. She was so grateful for her husband spurring her to do what is right and for the sisters who patiently taught her the word of God. Welcome to the family, Ophelia. Over in the Northern Federation World Sector, we have the faith-building story of Alex in the Minneapolis St. Paul Church. Alex is the mother of our brother, Ryler, who was recently baptized in April. Ever since his baptism, Alex made consistent efforts to attend church services with her son and began to study the Bible. And after weeks of wrestling with the scriptures and with repentance, she made Jesus Lord of her life and was baptized at their women's midweek service. Welcome to the family, Alex. Also faith building and very, very creative, the USA Northern Federation churches had TNT, teaching and training in 72 firework tents across 11 states to raise money for missions. In total, after some disciples donated up to 11 days of their time to man the firework stands, they sold almost $2.5 million of fireworks, making a profit for missions of an astounding $504,000. These much needed funds will be used to plant these congregations in the Northern Federation this fall. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Bozeman, Montana, St. Petersburg, Russia, and in the Russian Commonwealth nation of Georgia, the capital city of Tbilisi. The kingdom has been forcefully advancing this summer, expanding into new nations with the inaugural services of multiple new church plantings. We start in the tribe world sector with the Bangkok mission team. Early July, their small team of 10 disciples had 67 in attendance, and they also welcomed disciples visiting from the Philippines, Cambodia, Vietnam, the US, Australia, and Scotland. The sisters dazzled all in attendance with a graceful Thai cultural dance, and Lady Perez preached from Mark 8, 37, 
for what will a man give in exchange for his soul? The service closed with two additions. The glorious baptism was Carl, a PhD student from the Chula Longkorn University, the number one university in all Thailand. And the second edition was a place membership from the Ho Chi Minh Vietnam ICOC, Hiep. Welcome to the family, Carl and Hiep. And over in the United States for Operation Eagle were the inaugural services of Burlington, Vermont on August 13 and Lincoln, Nebraska on August 27. After weeks of praying, fasting, and planning, the 11 disciples on the Vermont team, led by Daniel Lindros and Melissa Duncan, hosted their inaugural service in the beautiful city of Burlington. Already the Lord has blessed them with two baptisms, David and Vestine. Nebraska's mission team of 14 disciples led by Eric and Gabby Rodas have already baptized three University of Nebraska students and currently have 75 precious souls studying the Bible. All right, well next we'll move over to the Africanus World Sector inaugural services, starting in Cantonou, Benin. Benin is a French-speaking country in West Africa with 15 million inhabitants. This country was the site of Dahomey, a prominent West African kingdom that arose in the 15th century. The territory became a French colony in 1872 and achieved independence on August 1st, 1960, as the Republic of Benin. Very interestingly, in the 1800s, a group of all-female warriors protected the African Kingdom of Dahomey with skills and a fierceness unlike anything the world has ever seen. These bold female warriors were called the Agoji women in the local language and later renamed the Amazonas by the French. A recent movie entitled The Woman King helped highlight the legacy of these amazing women. In their honor, a 99 foot or 30 meter tall statue of an Amazon warrior was inaugurated in 2022 in the vibrant city of Cotonou, whose population is 3 million people. The Benin Church is led by a dynamic young couple from Abidjan named Roland and Lena Aja. On July 9th, with eight extraordinarily courageous sisters and brothers on the Cotonou mission team, four visiting disciples, and 27 visitors from the ICOC, the Lord blessed their inaugural service with 133 in attendance and two baptisms. And now over to Accra, Ghana, where the mission team is led powerfully by Kwaku and Ashley Sarkodie. Kwaku is a Ghanaian national who was baptized while a student at Reed College in Portland by Kip in the early days of the movement. In time, Kwaku and Ashley married and moved to San Francisco and were blessed with their adorable daughter, Ama. The Sarkodiers grew to become the right-hand couple in this great church. Hearing the call from God to return to his homeland of Ghana, Kwaku did not hesitate to sacrifice the American dream for Jesus' dream. The Accra inaugural service on August 20th was held at the University of Ghana campus. And although students were released from classes one week prior, they had an outstanding attendance of 109 souls and closed out with the baptism of a campus student, Nathaniel. Excitingly, Kwaku's parents came to the service and felt very honored to host the inaugural celebration dinner with the mission team in their home. Amazingly, though the team landed in Accra less than two months ago, they have already witnessed an astounding eight baptisms. Wow. Now holding their inaugural service that very same Sunday was Lubumbashi Democratic Republic of Congo mission team led by the beloved couple, Mickey and Lily Ngungu. They had an attendance of 165 souls and six awesome baptisms. We now have five congregations in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Indeed, the motherland of Africa is on fire as they prepare for two more upcoming inaugural services this September in Lusaka, Zambia and Nairobi, Kenya. Please pray for them as they spread the aroma of Christ throughout the African continent. And more outstanding news from Operation Jerusalem in Los Angeles. It has been so inspiring these past few months to see the transformation and rapid growth of this mother church of the movement. At the start of 2023, the church had put before the Lord the goal of baptizing 300 for their entire year. Well, by the end of August, they had officially surpassed their goal with 311 souls baptized into Christ, and there are still four more months to go. Praise God and congratulations to Dr. Jason and Sarah Dimitri and to all the LA disciples for these incredible miracles, which could only be brought about through all of your faith and hard work. 
The City of Angels church leadership has now reset their 2023 baptism goal to 450 baptisms. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. All right, so we wanna close out today's episode with a very special message brought to you by our Women World Sector leaders. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. We want to wish a very happy 50th spiritual birthday to our movement's incredible women's ministry leader, Mom in the Faith, and our dear sister, Dr. Elena McKean. We are filled with so much gratitude for Kip's and yours faith and obedience to God. Ever since you were baptized at just 17 years old, just one month, before you became a freshman at the University of Florida. Your five decades of faith, kindness, and perseverance has resulted in thousands coming to Christ. And along with that, you have paved the way so gracefully for women to be elevated as leaders in God's kingdom. On behalf of all the World Sector leaders and our entire global family, we honor you and celebrate you for all that your hands have done. Happy 50th spiritual birthday. Feliz cumpleaños. And we here at GNN also want to wish you a very happy 50th spiritual birthday. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Good News Network. If you like what you saw today, please be sure to share the GNN with friends and family so they too can rejoice in God's incredible miracles this past summer. This is Luke and Brandon Beckman reporting to you from the Good News Network. The best news you'll ever see.